amino a, a lithium aluminum hybrid has four hydrogens. And we know with all of these conditions, we're going to form an aldehyde intermediate. So this is from addition of H minus to each of these carbonyls and then kicking out the respective heteratom to give us the aldehyde. And then in, we had two different ways for the aldehyde to go to the primary alcohol. One was another equivalent of LAH, reducing it, and that's fine. But I, I show you guys another mechanism where this number of electrons would find some ALH3, which is a byproduct from lithium aluminum hydride adding into one of these carbonyls. And they said that then these lone pair of electrons would donate to the ALH3, giving a net negative charge to the aluminum, but aluminum is not very electronegative. And so then all of these hydrogens will actually take the minus charge from the aluminum. And then they said then you can have an intramolecular reduction event that upon quenching with water gave us a product. And so a lot, a lot of students, I, I got some kickback, kickback about this intramolecular mechanism, mainly because it's complicated and it's confusing and like got another girl of LA to come in and do it. And of course another girl of LA to come in and do it. But I stuck to showing this mechanism because I said this mechanism will make a lot of chemistry in chapter 16 make a lot more sense. I know we have reached that time where we want to fully embrace this intramolecular aldehyde reduction. So in chapter 16, we're going to start off with two LAH analogs that will add into esters and amides just once. We're going to talk about two analogs of LAH that just stop once. So we're going to talk about two hybrid reagents that can take esters to the aldehyde and actually stop at the aldehyde. And we're going to compare the mechanism of them to uh, LAH to explain why they stop once and LAH does not stop once. <coughs> so LAH will keep going and we know that. The two hydride reagents, uh, lithium aluminum hydride analogs if you will, that will stop once, I'll draw right here and I think orange shows up okay. The first one is tri trifutoxy, so three T beetle uh, alkoxy groups off of it, aluminum hydride. So this will stop once. There should be an oxygen here. And then the more important, the more important one, and I think this should know, know it's more important because I'm going to tell you its nickname. And if I ever tell you a reagent's nickname, that should tell you two things. One, well, the reagent must be used a lot because it got a nickname. Uh, the other one is called it's diisobutyl. Diisobutyl aluminum hydride. And it's nickname, so it's diisobutyl, so it's D for di, isobutyl for iso, di, diisobutyl, and the isobutyl are just these groups right here, di, isobutyl, so B for butyl, aluminum hydride, <coughs> aluminum hydride. 
So this reagent, let me draw my hydrogen a little bit better place. So this reagent is called dibar. Di isobutyl aluminum hydride. Dibar. And so each of these reagents only add once. So under controlled cold conditions, you can make an ester and then go directly to the aldehyde. My question is, you guys want to guess why they stop once? Is there any easy mnemonic you might see? <clears throat> uh, an obvious difference between dibol and tri t hydoxy aluminum hydride and LAH? Only got one hydrogen. Nice. So one hydrogen. The, the big mnemonic is they have one hydrogen, so they stop once. That's not the reason why they stop once, but that's a good mnemonic. If an, algorithm, if an aluminum hydride reagent has one hydrogen, you can usually assume it's going to add once. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go here because I want to keep the LAH basic mechanism up here. So first off, let's, let's do something simple, and let's use uh, this guy, dibutyl aluminum hydride, with these three bulky uh, D-butoxy groups. So you can guess sterics will come into play a little bit. And let's explain why this only stops once. And let's do it with an acid chloride. things that make this different than dibol is instead of four hydrogens, it's got one, and instead of the other three hydrogens, it's got these really, really uh, bulky aluminum t beetle ethers. So it's fairly sterically bulky. The first step is going to be simple enough. It's just going to be the hydride from the reagent. Sorry about that team. Should be the ester. Well, oh, no, this is the acid chloride, right? Acid chloride, same thing. Again, it was way too nice outside this weekend. So, the first thing is your hydride is going to add into the uh, carbonyl carbon. plus a reduced thing. <coughs> and so this is actually a really good Lewis acid. And so what's going to happen? So in the LAH reaction, we form something like this first. And then we replace the lithium counter ion with the aluminum to do the intramolecular one. That's exactly what's going to happen here. this 
And it turns out, by <coughs> cold conditions, this guy's pretty stable. This is a this is a this is a very stable tetra alkoxy aluminum salt. Unlike with LAH that has three hydrogens, this just has nothing that can add to the carbonyl carbon. It just three T hydroxy groups, and we have all these really sterically hindered alkoxy groups. So the steric hindrance plus the, st the stability of this alkoxy, this tetra-alkoxy salt, and oxygens are very electronegative, and there's a minus charge, so these, these oxygens are able to suck into an inductive effect to minus charge, uh, making this a fairly stable intermediate. So at uh, cold conditions, this just stays. This just stays like that. At cold conditions, everything rests as this intermediate. And so no more LAH can come in because this is a sterically hindered intermediate. And so then what you do is you run the reaction up. So I should say we do this reaction usually at minus 78 degrees Celsius. So then we let it warm up. And we add some H2O. So the H2O is just going to quench any of the remaining uh, hydride reagent. Because remember, hydride reagents are also really basic. So any leftover hydride reagent is just going to deprotonate uh, the water. So as we let it warm up and add water, we're going to get rid of any hydride reagent. And then as it warms up, there's enough energy to now kick out the chlorine to give us our oil. Oxygen, we can kick out the chlorine, uh, gives us aldehyde. There's no more hydride reagent left, right? Because we quenched it with the water. So then eventually, the aluminum is just going to fall off, and that's going to give us a product. So the way this reagent works is by giving us a stable intermediate that's not going to break down under the production <coughs> conditions. All right, and the reason it's stable is because there's no hydrogens here. We do something very similar with lithium aluminum hydride, but with LAH, this intermediate has a hydrogen, hydride, which can go and add in and do our double reduction. In this case, there's no such thing. We just have the sterically hindered Lewis acid that's bound to this, so it's just going to stay there until we quench the reaction or warm it, up, warm it up, so there's enough energy to kick this off. Yes? Does the ALO contribute? Yeah. Is that a plus or is it a plus charge or is that just that's just and? a plus. That, but, that, remember, aluminum with three things on it, it doesn't have a formal positive charge, but it really loses it. Right. Coulombically speaking, as far as the oxygen is concerned, it is a positive charge. It's very coulombically electropositive. So maybe what I'll draw, just to be more precise, is a big, this is just a plus as in an and, but there's still going to be a big partial positive charge on this aluminum. So that is how this reagent works. So just to finish up, this reagent is a lot like LAH, except it only has one hydrogen. And so in this case, the mnemonic works. This thing only stops once because there's one hydrogen. But then it's a terribly hindered thing. And this is stable. That's that's it.
So then, now let's talk about Dybal. So Dybal, So diacetyl lumen hybrid. Dibol exists in a neutral form, right? Dibol has just tri-substituted aluminum. So in its current form, it's actually a really good Lewis acid. Since Dibol is neutral aluminum with three things on it, it's really just a Lewis acid. And so this hydrogen has almost no hydride character in it until a Lewis base is added. So this is not really a hydride reagent as is. Oh, it's not a very good hydride reagent as is. But this aluminum is really, 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 really Lewis acidic. It's so Lewis acidic that dibol has actually been found, found to exist as a dimer in that this aluminum is so Lewis acidic, it can actually take electrons from the hydrogen and another molecule of dibol. So this is a very, very, very Lewis acidic thing. It's so Lewis acidic, it can take protons from a fairly weak hydride source. So just keep that in mind when I'm going over the mechanism. Dibol itself is a really good Lewis acid, and until it interacts with the Lewis acid, that's not a very good hydride. Sorry, Lewis base is not a very good hydride. So what the mechanism looks like, and this time we're going to do an ester. Right, so here's our SP, here, here's our planar Dibol. Here's our ester. The first step, nothing is going to happen until the little bit of electrons and the ester carbonyl oxygen attack the aluminum. So it gives us an intermediate like that. That's going to be a positive charge on the oxygen and a minus charge on the aluminum. So once the carbonyl interacts with the dibol, two things happen. First, these lone pair of electrons from the oxygen go in the aluminum, finally giving the aluminum a net minus charge. And once the aluminum has a net minus charge, it can now act as a hydride. Because once the aluminum has a net minus charge, we know that the minus charge is really going to be lying. And the substituents that are not aluminum, because of electronegativity arguments. And so now, once the oxygen coordinates to the aluminum, giving up a lone pair of its electrons, it's now making dibol a real hydritic reagent. Next. So do you think the fact the aluminum gave, that the oxygen gave up its two electrons to aluminum to make it a positive charge oxygen, do you think this is going to be more or less, less reactive of, of an electrophile? It's going to be more reactive. And so a general concept that we'll be talking about time and again in chapter 16 and probably beyond is Lewis acids and Bronsted acids can activate the electrophilicity of carbonyls through an interaction just like this. So the lone pair of electrons on a carbonyl oxygen are fairly Lewis basic. And the Lewis basic enough that they can take a proton from a strong acid, or they can take, they can interact with the Lewis acid to now give a, a positive charge oxygen, and that's just going to be a more reactive carbonyl. Because when, we have, when there's a positive charge here, the positive charge isn't going to rely on the electronegative oxygen, it's really going to lie more on the carbonyl carbon. 
And so when a Lewis acid forms an addict with a carbonyl, we'll bring some serious partial positive charge of this carbonyl. So this coordination effect has a twofold effect. It makes the hydride much more hydritic, and it makes the carbonyl carbon much more electrophilic. So what happens then is we do this intramolecular kind of thing. Where this hydrogen, the electron density in this hydrogen aluminum bond, is going to have the hydride jump into this carbonyl with this electron density going here. oxygen bond isn't going anywhere. So just as before, it just stays like this. This is the product at cold temperatures. So at cold temperatures, like minus 78, this stuff happens, hydride adds, and this is, this is the problem. It just stays like this. At cold temperatures, without any water, it just stays like this. And so, any other dye value add is not going to do anything. Because it has to coordinate. And there's nothing for it to coordinate to this with regards to this because there's no Lewis basic thing. This is just a very stable aluminum, tri-substituted aluminum addict with this, what we call an acetal, and we'll talk more about that later. We just have a stable intermediate. So then, just as with that case, we warm it up. And add some water. And what the water's going to do is attack the aluminum. Because again, this is a very good Lewis acid. Pick out this protein, this proton. 